Good morning, beautiful light beings. Shannon O'Flaherty here. I'm a shamanic practitioner and therapist and teacher, and I've created this beautiful group, Releasing the Wounded Healer. And the reason why I call it Releasing the Wounded Healer is because so many healers became healers in the first place, because myself included, because we all had some kind of wounding that we really needed healed, that doctors couldn't fix, that perhaps psychotherapists couldn't quite find the answer to. And so eventually we were called along our path and went to see one kind of healer or another. For me, I, um, I suppose the first alternative healer I saw really was a homeopath. And she's the one who initially suggested I become a therapist in my own right. I thought she had a great sense of humor back then because I thought, what? <laughs> and then I was led to shaman school. But whatever path of healing you're led to, uh, you go through this process of healing your own wounds and then you kind of think, well, hey, I I'm so much better than I used to be. I, I feel really good. Maybe if I could change, then certainly I must be able to help others to change. So that's how we become the wounded healer. But at some point in time, we need to heal that last piece of our wounding because we don't want to be the wounded healer forever. Just like an alcoholic, I know in AA, because my mother went through it, you're forever an alcoholic, which... I understand it in terms of healing so that you don't go back on the wagon, but that also keeps you in your story. So you don't want to always be a wounded healer. You want to be the healed healer. And what happens in the past, oh, hello, hello, Lucy and Susie, thanks for joining. What, what happens in the past, in past lives, we took oaths. We took an oath of silence. It was either a pagan oath or a Christian oath. It doesn't really much matter where it came from unless you're having a really huge divide between religion and spirituality in this lifetime. Not many people have that, have that um, problem, but it does exist. <laughs> Usually you're called in one way or another, and, and I think there's more of a combining of the two in this day and age instead of it being so separate. And what happens when you have this oath, and every single client I've ever seen has this oath, is that we've taken this oath of silence, which means that we're not allowed to speak our truth. We're not allowed to tell the truth, which puts us in a terrible position of always having to keep secrets. Um, where the worst part is not being able to tell the truth to ourselves. And so it puts us into a constant place of fear and paranoia and judgment and humiliation because we're forever divided and fragmented. When I first went to shaman school, my biggest fear was that if I if I lived fully, if I became fully who I, I knew at some level I had the potential of being, that I would lose everything and everyone that I loved and that was important to me. And that was also kind of a secret to myself because I never admitted it. And then one of my dear shaman sisters who was in this course with me, uh, we were working together one day and she had the exact same she had the exact same feeling. And I remember just thinking, wow, wow, I'm not, al I'm not alone in this. <laughs> Somebody else feels like this too. And I was so terrified to step into my power and to step into my truth and be completely who I was because of the past. So I have a lot of past witch histories, which is no kidding why I ended up in England where uh, one teacher told me that you'll always end up in the most difficult place for you to live so that you can remember who you are and who you need to become and what you need to heal on a deep cellular, generational, ancestral level and to reclaim your gifts and your power. 
And so for years, that's what I ended up doing here, clearing witch histories and stuff, which is interesting. And now it's more about calling back, calling back my tribes, because back in those days, you know, witches, we weren't normally evil casting spells on people. We were naturopaths and homeopaths and midwives. We were just healers. We were healers. So you might be in a place of feeling terrified to own your own reality. What will others think of me? Oh my God, if people knew the information that I'm receiving, I'm going to be put in a straitjacket and put away forever. If they know that I have a big black invisible cat by my side, they're going to think I'm completely crazy. I know I've been through all of this and zip. It was a big, big secret. My spirituality was a big, big secret. And, and I've only ever been living that sort of half truth kind of stepping on the path and then stepping away from the path and then back on the path and forever having this fragmented struggle and never really owning it yet the times that I was fully doing the work and really loving it I I was so in flow and everything was working out perfectly and then I'd get triggered or something would freak me out and then I'd go into my pattern and this is how you know if you're still a wounded healer because you're going to be forever having this internal struggle or being afraid to speak your truth fully, being afraid to tell people what you do free from the fear of judgment or humiliation or embarrassment. Yeah. I'm a healer. I help people change their belief systems. I can help people pull dead spirits of other people that have zipped into them out of their bodies. Yeah, is it strange? Perhaps. It's not that uncommon. <laughs> it's not that uncommon. So when you start to really live your full truth and get fully into alignment with yourself, your whole world changes. Yeah, okay, some people leave your life because for whatever their reasons they're triggered, they can't handle the truth either. But you know what? You start to attract the most important people to you ever in your life, the people who are going to love you through thick and thin and not judge not judge you and be there for you because they understand who you are. They see your light, they see your power, and they hold you in that space. Even if they're not completely there themselves, if they're on the path enough to, to support you in your journey and not get freaked out by it, because not every single friend I have in the world is a healer, but I would say predominantly most of... Most of my best um, soul friends are on the healing path or path of service in one way, shape, or form. Or certainly they get it or they have their own spiritual um, belief system, spiritual philosophy, and they're into meditation and they understand the whole connecting to source thing. So these subconscious beliefs that we hold keep us veiled from having utmost clarity and keep us held back and separate from our God, from our source, from being completely in our center and trusting the universe when we really need to. It holds us back from being on a, on a lovely, even keel and being calm regardless of what is happening all around us when you start to calm down and see that even when you have no idea what's happening tomorrow <laughs> but you're not going to have a big fit about it you're not going to jump into emotional drama and believe me i've <laughs> I have been drama queen a lot in my life. I've had temper tantrums. I've had big emotional fits. I've gotten angry. You know, I've done, I've done, all, I've done all of it. And there comes a time, and you just keep doing the work. You keep doing the work, and finally, you get your missing soul pieces back. They come back if you have enough soul retrieval, and if you do enough work, eventually, it all clicks into place. It's not an easy fix. It's a way of life. Just like diets, they don't work. You have to change your relationship with food. So you need to change your relationship with your spirituality, 
with your truth, with your oath of silence. In this lifetime, we are we have to keep all of the secrets from our family, keep all of our family shame. That's another Facebook Live. <laughs> so there's so much going on. Hi, Emma. Lovely to have you here and Sandy. So come and work with me because why hold yourself back from all of the greatest gifts that you've been born with? And when you can finally get out of that wounded healer space into the healed healer space, then you're really flying Then your wings are spread and you're like, wow, full steam ahead. This is so exciting. I feel so light. I feel so happy all the time. And then when people are judging you or being triggered or throwing all of their stuff at you, which people will still do, you can just be like, oh, okay, well, that's where you are. <laughs> that's that feels sad for you, but then you're clear because you know where your energy ends and where other energies begin. You still feel other people's energies and things, but you don't need to take everything on. You can be very in your center and just notice. It's a very interesting time to just be in a place of observation without being so deeply affected by everything. You still feel it, but it doesn't unravel you. So do you want to find out what all of your limiting beliefs are, what your subconscious patterns of behavior are, stuff that you don't even realize. Find out. Come and work with me and change your life. It's time. Don't you want to give yourself this gift before you get with your family at Christmas and the holidays before they're going to trigger you? I'd love to see you again because I'm sure we've all met before in another lifetime. So private message me because there's a wonderful beta test price going on for my eight-week course. And you can really jump into fantastic change and start the new year right. I really look forward to hearing from all of you. So much love to you, and I'll see you in the next video.